Hi everyone, Bersik here, and in this video I'm reviewing a clown's daughter from IT named Penny Nice. One of my recent live broadcasts on my Instagram, I mentioned that I wanted to add a new one-of-a-kind doll to my collection, a clown's daughter from the movie IT. My artist friends were watching the broadcast and made my wish a reality ahead of Halloween. Actually, it's a really good tradition. Once for Halloween, I got the daughter of Freddy Krueger, Emily Krueger, and now it is the daughter of Pennywise, Penny Nice. And I wonder who I will get for the next Halloween. Time will tell. But for now, let's get acquainted with this beauty. Pennywise Clown is the key character of the Stephen King's novel It and the film adaptations, and he is probably the most famous out of all of the evil clowns. Stephen King made the main character of It specifically a clown because he thought that clowns are the kid's biggest phobia. The fear of clowns is scientifically called cholerophobia, and I think it got even more widely spread after the release of the first movie It. Just based on my personal experience, I know friends, people who, after watching It in childhood, were scared of clowns ever since. I'm the lucky one not to have the same fate even though I watched it when I was very little. I was never afraid of clowns. I'm not afraid of them now and I'm not planning on being afraid. Honestly, I even pity them because the movie It is basically discrediting their profession. And actually, It is not a clown but some metaphysical substance that can shapeshift into anything. It is just that the form of the clown is It's favorite. And the love for this form has been transferred to his daughter Penny Nice. Her substance is called she, and the second part of her name, Penny Nice, is self-explanatory. She is kind and nice. It is not known for certain how she was born because it is some kind of a genderless creature that arrived to us from outside of the universe. But it is known that her mission in the human world is to gradually make the awakenings of Pennywise less bloody and horrific. Every 27 years, she and it awaken from the so-called hibernation, and together they start studying the children's fears in order to interpret them into a physical form. But their goals are completely different. Pennywise wants to scare its victims in order to feed on their fear and pain and later on to devour them altogether. Penny Nice, on the other hand, shapeshifts into monsters so that the kids would stop being afraid and get used to them, which would make them invincible in front of Pennywise. And gradually, it would stop coming back into the human world from his world of deadlights because of the lack of feed. With every awakening, there will be less and less victims because children would stop being scared of monsters. And one day, Penny Nice's mission will be fully completed. But she is planning to stay in the human's world afterwards. First, because she wants to continue fighting with humans' fears. And not only children, but also adults. She also really wants to join Freak de Chic Circus, where she will be bringing joy to kids with her performances and magic. And her biggest dream is for the children around the world to stop being scared of clowns. By the way, Penny Nice once met Emily Kruger and they became friends quickly because they realized they have a lot in common, the troubled dads to be exact. I mean, Freddy Krueger also fed on kids' souls and fears, bringing their individual phobias into life, but he did it in the dreams and not in reality. Not only did Emily and Penny Nice become friends, but also together they came up with an alternative to feeding on fear. It turned out that the children's screams of joy and excitement are pretty filling as well. Penny Nice is 54 years old, by the way, but don't be surprised. It is not that much for her substance, and her dad is over a thousand years old. She was born on an international circus day, April 15th. That's why she's very artistic and very talented. She's skilled at tricks and telling funny jokes, so she's able to make any monster seem funny. And even in the form of a ghost or a ghoul, she can make a kid laugh. And that's her individual special feature. Because she's such a talented performer, she helps kids stop being scared of monsters, the horror books and movie characters, and other evil spirits. She also, just like Daddy, loves dancing, but she changed their signature family dance into something more modern. 
And if you remember, in order for the kids to stop being scared of her, she needs to look like her dad so that this image would bring positive associations. In this case, she has a similar clown makeup and red hair color, just like Pennywise in the 2017 film adaptation of It that I really liked. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it, because for me, it is not just a horror movie, but also an artistic masterpiece. The forms of all the individual children's phobias are so quite interestingly selected in the movie. When it comes to the outfit, it is different from the daddy's. It is more bright, more positive, and in my opinion, is a perfect match for the Monster High Freak to Chic collection. I also wanted to mention that in the doll's image, Penny Nice is on her early stage of transformation from the clown into the ghost. Her transparent hands and cracked forehead are the evidence of that. Symbolically, my new one-of-a-kind doll for Halloween was created by the same artist that made Emily Kruger. So the face was painted by Lane Shepard, and the outfit and the wig were made by Eliana Spechkova. I'm insanely thankful to the girls for making it happen because I'm ecstatic about this horror movie and crazy about the Pennywise character, and extremely happy that I added his creepy daughter to my collection. I will leave the girls' links in the description below. Click on it and check them out. There you can not only admire unique dolls, but also can add to your collection. Aliana gave me this doll in a box decorated with a red bow with a golden jingle bell. And this jingle bell is a sign that the new year is getting close. As always, the girls even designed the box with an interesting approach because there is a Penny Nice's art on the inside of the cover. Lane Shepard drew the art, very pretty drawing, where Penny Nice looks, you know, very disheveled and kind of disappointed. And I think it is because during another dad's awakening, she was again unable to save all the children. And I think the doll has the same mood, at least in my vision. The doll is situated on a black insert inside the box. Here there are decorations in star shapes and also gold and red strings. And I noticed right away that her dress has the same gold jingle bell just like on the bow that was on the top. And the coolest thing about this whole design is that there were blown up balloons at the bottom by her feet. Aliana made them out of the real balloons cutting them to smaller size. It takes me a while to get ready for a review so the balloons got deflated and don't look that great. But I have the picture how it originally looked. Awesome, right? The doll is tied up to the back of the box with a red silky ribbon. Let's free our girl clown already. I love the sound of the jingle bells. Like, Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. The doll is based on the spectra from the picture day. That's why her hands are transparent. The wig has a silicon cap and is made out of Angora goat fur dyed red. The wig is voluminous, airy, very pleasant to the touch. It reminds me of the hair of Eva Marshmallow a little bit. But there the hair is a pink cloud and here it is a red one. And by the way, she reminds me of a Russian cartoon character, Antoshka, with her hair and freckles. I think that if she would impersonate Antoshka, she would be definitely able to make Russian kids laugh. She's a redhead wonder and my first redhead one-of-a-kind doll. The doll's face with Pennywise makeup turned out to be not so much creepy, but more worried and even touching. Her big eyes are pierced with kindness, sacrifice, and a burning desire to stop the killings. The makeup was done using pastels, watercolor pencils, clear gel, and of course, a pinch of inspiration and love. Penny Nice got her unusual eye color from her daddy. The iris is bright orange with a green outline. On the top, there is a black liner and eyelashes and shimmering golden eyeshadow on the lid. The bottom contour of the eye is reddish, and that's why the eyes look inflamed like she cried a lot. And also next to it, there is another contour with thin lashes, lots of them. The reddish nose tip intensifies the effect of her weepy face, and in this case, such a nose replaces a painted clown nose. There are also freckles on the doll's nose. The main thing about her face, a clown pattern, comes out of her lips and cuts through her face on her cheeks to her forehead. Crossing the eyebrows, the color of the pattern is red-black and the upper lip is mainly black, which reminds me of dried blood. The lower lip in its turn is almost fully pale. It is cool that the doll's teeth are visible. This is my second toothy one-of-a-kind doll. Pennywise's daughter couldn't be without teeth, but in comparison to her dad, she needs them for a wide, friendly smile and not to scare and chew up kids. The eyelid folds and the eyeshadows under the eyebrows are drawn very realistically. The brows are black with a red tip and are almost horizontal. Thin hairs are drawn at the base of the brows. On the side of her forehead, the effect of this shattered porcelain is realistically drawn. In this case, this detail also imitates a cracked clown makeup on Pennywise's, her dad's, face. And also a transition from one form to the other, like I said before, I imagine that this is a transformation from the clown image to the ghost image. Her outfit consists of several parts. The top dress is made out 
of the satin fabrics of two kinds that are patchwork motifs. It is a one-toned red satin and a satin with dark cherry stripes. And we all know that the stripe is one of the circus symbols, including the colors of the circus tent. The dress has rounded neckline, cap sleeves, and they are gathered around the elbows. Wide cuffs at the bottom. The bottom of the dress is cut off at the waist and is bell-bottom shaped and also has curved edging. It reminds me of a circus tent ruffle or a stage curtain. The bottom of the dress and the neckline is decorated with small bronze beads. Also, there are jingle bells attached to the bottom's corners. They are metal and remind me of jingle bells on the jester's hat or harlequin. The front of the dress is embroidered with golden beads along the seams. On the back, the small red beads imitate the buttons, but the actual closure is a snap. The dress has a golden lining with red accents. The bottom skirt is made out of the gold crocheted lace, and honestly, it looks the richest in the whole image. The skirt is gathered around the waistline, and if you look closer, you can see gold glass beads around the bottom edge. The details are so tiny, you can't see them from far away. There was no need to go to this extent of labor, but Eliana is not one to take an easy way out, and such details make the doll's image unique. The doll has a clown collar, and around the neck, perio style of course, it is made out of the cotton lace. It is not as basic as it seems from the first glance. There's a thin silk ribbon in the middle of the collar that turns into ties with crystals on the ends. There's also a crystal along the center of the collar, but you can hardly see it under the lace. And it is a really cool effect because you don't see it. But under a certain angle, something is sparkling in the collar. Under the skirt, the doll is wearing puffy bloomers with the same fabrics combinations as the dress. The bloomers are knee-length. They are gathered along the top and the bottom to make them voluminous. They have rubber bands on the top and bottom. The doll is wearing tube socks with black and white stripes. They're a perfect match for her clown and circus image. And finally, the shoes. These shoes were customized from the Draculauras from the Sweet 1600 collection. As you can see now, they are black patent shoes with cute hearts along the center and sides. The shoes are plastic, and in order for the doll to be able to fit in them, Eliana got rid of the ankle strap. But I think the shoes will look very good even without the strap. And the coolest thing about them is that the wedge has blood smudges. And I think it is nothing less than the kid's blood who Penny Nice was not able to save from her dad this time. Since Penny Nice is a positive clown and she brings joy to kids, she has more than just a single sinister red balloon up her sleeve, but the whole bunch of cute balloons from the segment Bye or Bye. I want to thank the girls, Lane and Eliana, for this bright and different doll addition to my collection. All of you know how crazy I am about the Monster High Freak to Chic collection, and I think Penny Nice would be a great match for it. Comment which monster kids do you want to get for your collections, and give me suggestions who to pick for the next Halloween. Give thumbs up if you like this review, and it was interesting to listen to the biography that I created for the doll. Smile more often, and don't be scared of the clowns. Bye-bye, everyone.